started tonight. So this is our Facebook Live for January, and we're just going to be recapping um, our topic, which was how do blind people read? And many of us have parents who do it differently, um, or it's changed through the years as technology's changed. Um, the NLS, um, the National Library Service, has changed how they give books. I remember back in the day where we had like a record player for our books and not the cartridges, um, not even the cassette tapes. Like there were cassette tapes out, but record players were still like the 80s, 70s, 80s thing, I guess, for cassettes. Um, so feel kind of old. <laughs> Um, but we're just going to go through some of the things that I discussed this month and kind of just do an overview, give a review if you have questions about anything, comments, um, things you think is cool, things that you do differently, a parent does differently. Um, chime in, let me know because I'm always interested what other people do because yes, I know blind people, but everyone's different. They all have their own things that they want to do. So um, we're going to start with the topic of Braille. Braille is something I enjoy. It's something I like. Um, I wish I was good at. Not that good at. So we talked about the print Braille book. So this is one of my favorites. It's not my top favorite. My favorite as a kid was Owl Moon. Um, loved Owl Moon. Wish I could memorize it now, but I still have it. So print Braille books, um, are really cool. It's neat um, for a blind parent to have when they do have a sighted child because as the child learns to read, um, there is the print on the page and the braille. Just on this, I can turn to one where I can hold the braille separate. Um, the braille is on this clear sheet of paper. So, um, you're not I mean, you're kind of messing up the picture a little bit when they're reading the braille, but not really. Um, and it's kind of cool. This book I like because I can read it. Um, it has grade two, this is before the UEB stuff they deal with now, but grade two is up here at the top. And then grade one is down here at the bottom. So I could actually read this book. I actually took a couple of the ones that we had that were split like that and read them growing up because I like being able to read along with mom and what it says. Um, so you do have print braille books. These are really, really cool um, to be able to have when you have sighted and blind in the same household because both of y'all can enjoy it together. Um, then we have regular braille books. So this is my mom's ABCs of braille. It actually teaches you how to read braille. Um, so ignore this page here. But um, the whole book, if it's a regular braille book, is braille. Both sides would be braille. And when they do double-sided braille, like most of your magazines or braille books, you kinda can't use your eyes as well. So I just tell my mom I can cheat until it's double-sided and then I can't read braille. So um, braille books is another way. It's a really good way. It's not used as much. I wish we did more braille. Um, and I'll probably get on a soapbox about that at a later time just because um, for me, that is something really big. Like, I want to know your thoughts on Braille. Do you have a family member who uses Braille? Um, anything like that. So, Braille is, um, Braille books is another way they can get this from. A couple different companies do it. The Library of Congress actually has a Braille division, which I think is really cool, to be honest, um, that they have Braille books. So, Braille somewhat standard, you would think, oh yeah, all blind people read Braille, but they don't. Little known fact, a lot of blind people actually don't, um, especially nowadays it's not taught as much. So, Braille books, print Braille books. I know there's a couple of programs, like Mom's got this one through National Braille Press, where we do um, monthly subscription now. I don't know if she did it that way when we were growing up, but she's doing it with my daughter. So, every month, Starting this year, um, January is Rachel's first month, she got a book, and that's going to be her and Green's special book. So, that is one of the things um, that is really neat to have as blind and sighted households. So, I can read this book to Rachel, Grandma can read it to Rachel, my mom read it to us, I'm sure we read it to her at some point. It also helps with a new reader, because she could follow along. Um, 
and help us read through it. So print braille books, one way that blind people read braille books. Those are the things we think of the most. Um, other ways are audiobooks. So regular audiobooks, CD player, state player. So um, as I mentioned in our post about that, if you look on your tape player, there's actually these symbols, but they're indented. So if you felt really carefully with your fingers, you can fill that. So the eject, it's not eject, checks over here. This is record, it's a circle. Play is going to be a triangle, something I learned recently. Um, whichever area, whichever way that the arrow is pointing on that triangle, the tip, is the direction that the cassette tape plays in. Because I have a couple that go in the opposite direction. Instead of going, this one goes right, I have them going left. You have your rewind and fast forwards. Those are going to be those double arrows back or forwards so that remind you which direction is back and forward. Eject is a square with a triangle. Usually the triangle hat's on top. It just depends. And then I think I forgot to mention this one in my um, Facebook post, and that is the pause button is two dash lines, which it's like two little dots. So that's on a regular cassette tape player, or if you're still old-fashioned like me, love my boom box. My sister bought me one because mine died. Has the same thing for the cassette tape player. But then the CD player part actually also has those same indentations. So you've got your play button has a triangle, your rewind, your stop, fast forward. All of that is still on here, has those same exact symbols. So even the mini Walkman ones, um, same symbols. So it's kind of cool how that is. I don't know how that came to be, um, but I think it's neat because any blind person, as long as they know what those symbols mean, can do that. The latest and greatest from National Library Services, which I think this thing is cool. So this is the newest edition. This is their NLS player, National Library Service player. This is a digital player. So this thing is so amazing. I think it's amazing. If I was losing my vision, I think I would be super excited to have one of these because I love to read. And I'm not a huge audiobook person. I'm working on that just because I have a two-year-old and I don't have time <laughs> to sit down and read a book always. Um, but with this, you get these cartridges from the library. But coolest part is there's actually a USB port here on the side. You can take your own thumb drive. They have um, a couple different websites. The main one library uses, I think, is Bard, B-A-R-D dot com. And you set up an account, and you can download anything they have in their library as an audiobook. Download it to your thumb drive, plug it in, and you can listen. It's like my mom and I did a trilogy. I read the first one. And we were doing, I think it was a 14-hour trip. And this thing has a battery, by the way. It has a built-in battery. It charges. It's supposed to last 24 hours. She got the new one because her battery died. Um, started spazzing. But with this, um, we did... We listened to the second two books, which I just last year finally bought in print. Um, listened to the last two of the trilogy on our way up and back. And the whole way up, which was about a 10 or 12 hour drive, I want to say, um, I didn't die. And it was great. Now that we've got the digital things, you could pipe it through your stereo, but that was before then. So I like this because these buttons also are, they're color coded. They're tactual, and they've got some braille labelings. So power's pretty easy here. My mom said I can play. So, can power it. Player on. You've got your Ten mom. books. Across the Sabbath River, in search of a lost tribe of Israel. You can pause it. Forward again, there's arrows pointing forward in reverse. It has a sleep mode, so you can timer it um, so long to play. It's got a tone, so say it's too deep, it's too weird sounding. It has a speed, if you're a speed reader or you like it slow. Some readers on their natural are like so slow, like. And continues sporadically into the 1990s, they generally have the upper hand. The Cookies, an estimated quarter of money poor's population of 1.8 million, were unable to form a common front. Some were cookie separatists. Some clung to their tribal identities. So, do 
different speeds. Um, and then they always have menu and next because now she was informing me they don't just send one book. On the cartridges, a lot of times they'll do multiple books, so you can skip to next chapter, next book. There's a menu option. When you first get it, if you've never used one, um, if there's not a cartridge in here, it actually walks you through the programs. It's kind of cool. And the other thing it does, it does bookmark your place. So the NLS player is amazing, and it is special just for the blind community. So talk to your local library or your state library that does blind services and get one of these because this is cool. They have so many books and if you're an audio person you don't do braille you still get to listen and that's pretty cool. I mean they have, I think mom said they finally have, read, they have Reader's Digest and like the magazines from National Geographic and I don't even know what all else they have out there. I just know there's the two we always had growing up that were in braille. They're too bulky for braille so they have digital Bard also allows you to do digital. You also have that. So the last of the reading, I'm going to slow down. I feel like I'm speeding through to this, is with Bard. And there's a couple other places, like I was saying, and I don't remember the names of them. I can dig them up if anyone's interested. Um, but with the audio downloads, they also have .brl, which is a braille file. Um, or they have text files, so you can pull that off and read it on a device, whether that be a tablet or one of these cool thingies. I borrowed my mom's internet, it's not mine. Um, Braille computer. So, what's really cool is my mom's more of a Braille user than an audio, although she does do audiobooks clearly. Um, but if she can get it in Braille, she'd prefer it. So, this little thing can connect with an SD card or a thumb drive to that website or she can use from the laptop to a thumb drive and put it on here and then she can read it in braille. So having a braille computer to read on is another way. Um, that's actually how my mom did books lately for us. Like she got a hold of the um, Wizard of Oz person but it's not, it's the whole series of Wizard of Oz books. and I couldn't begin to tell you which one it is um but he the author has like 10 books out there and she read them to us on her braille computer not braille not audio she did it on here um and that was a lot of fun i have a couple favorites in that way and learning that's another reason back to my braille is being able to have that braille book but it's not carrying around a big, huge, bulky book that you have to figure out how you're going to fit something this big. You're going to need at least a 12 by 12 bag just for your book versus like we've gone ebook digital on a little brow computer. And my mom's current one's actually like half the size of this. So. Um, that is how blind people read. I wasn't going to go too much into the Braille. Um, it is Braille Literacy Month for January, which is why I thought it was kind of cool that we ended up overlapping, talking about how blind people read with Braille Literacy Month. So um, if you're interested in us talking more about Braille, most people are pretty familiar um, on the blog. I had to think about that for a minute, sorry. On the blog page. I will be discussing more about, um, I'll put some links up there to some of the braille if you're looking for like, you just want to see what the braille alphabet looks like, you're curious, things like that, um, totally cool with that. And as long as it doesn't look like we have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. It'll be easy, quick. Um, as always, you can follow us at Children Raised Around the Blind. It's actually Crab Children Raised Around the Blind on Facebook. And we now have an Instagram page as well. That's at Children Raised Around the Blind. We also use that hashtag over there. So join us. Keep an up with us as we head into February. I'm kind of excited. Um, we're going to be discussing some really cool things in technology. So I'm not doing super in-depth like, oh, this is how this has changed, but just some basics. So the first week we're going to go over... Um, some things as simple as like using an ATM, um, the audio described videos that are now required by law because of a treaty that got signed and a lot of legislation to work that through. 
for accessibility, um, talking, just in general talking materials, talking things you can get. There's also, um, we're going to talk about the screen readers, um, ADA websites, ADA apps, what some of that stuff means, why it's really important if you are not getting the access that you need, that you go ahead and request those things. Um, I may do go into that a little bit more in our video for next month. Um, some ways that we've worked with a couple companies to get that taken care of. Um, yeah. All about technology next month, the changes. We're going to end it with talking about how Braille is still very vital um, and some of the reasons that technology is great, but we also don't want to rely on it completely. So there are a few things in that category. Um, and then as we head into March, my goal is to discuss awkward situations. So I'm sure many of you have those stories, just weird things, awkward things, being the sighted person catching the side eye from the other sighted person that the blind person's talking to that they can't see the body language. Yeah. Um, those types of fun things. Um, I'm sure we'll have many stories because we're going to be down at our state capitol quite a bit this year, which means we'll be talking to legislators that aren't used to seeing a blind person. Our personal um, rep, local reps and senators are fairly used to us. We bug them quite frequently when we're down there once a year or twice a year and get with them and hang out with them and they like almost know us on a first name basis. It's kind of scary. It's kind of cool but kind of scary. Like I've checked out my senator before at the cash register. <laughs> Those things. But um, awkward situations. So things that happen, things that accidentally happen. Um, things they tell you that they did and you're like, you did what? How do you confuse those two bottles again? How did we live as children? How did we make it? Because, yeah, how, what? So, funny stories, awkward stories. Um, it's going to be kind of a memory month in March. And then we'll kind of figure out where we're going from there because I haven't gotten to April yet. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some information about how blind people read. Like I said, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to let me know. I hope you guys have a good Friday night. Almost to the end of January. That's so exciting. For me. I'm sad, but excited. So I will see you guys next month. And keep following the Facebook page as we'll have a few more posts coming up. Bye, everybody.